This is the brand new Rolling Stones in mono box set, one of several box sets they've released in the last decade or so, but this is the first one to put all their recordings together in one place in mono. So mono, you can look up the technical differences, but essentially this was the preferred way for the Beatles, the Stones, Bob Dylan, Motown, Stax, all of them, Garage Rock, to put out their music in the 60s because they were dealing with small transistor radios, AM radios in cars, uh, TV like Ed Sullivan and American Bandstand, all of that was in mono back then, and so they paid much more attention to how they were mixing in mono than the stereo versions. Uh, you wouldn't realize that for many years because in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, the stereo versions of most of the Stones and other acts' music, those were made available, even though those were not always the preferred versions by the artists themselves. So in the last few years, we've seen a big push to re-release all the mono stuff, and the Stones are, I think, one of the last major artists to put out a box set of everything. Um, almost everything in here was mixed for mono specifically, uh, or it's a fold-down in later years, which that means is they took the stereo tape and they just combined them into one channel for a mono recording. Um, and those still sound pretty good in here, as you'll find out. So, looking at the box, it's not unlike the Beatles box that was in mono. The Beatles box hinges, it sort of has a flip top. This, the whole front flips open. So the Beatles box is a little sturdier than this one. Uh, but be that as it may, this is still pretty well made. It'll look nice on a shelf. So to get started with the actual discs in there, the first one, this is their first album, The Rolling Stones. Came out in 1964 in England. This is the British version. And as you'll as you may know, the American version said England's newest hit makers. Real big up here and it had a blurb for a photo. The photo is not included, unfortunately. A rip reproduction of it is not included. But the disc itself is pretty well made, as are all the ones in this set. I noticed they're well pressed, nice thick vinyl, very quiet. Uh, this was recorded at Region Sound Studios in London, which was a small, funky studio. This has a very buzzy, slightly distorted, almost thin sound, but I'm sure the Stones love that. It serves the music well, very raw. Sounds a little like early, very, very early chess records, which is ironic when we get to the next few albums. Uh, but it's still a great album, a great portrait of the band at the time. Their next album was 12 by 5. This one came out in America. They had an EP called 5 by 5. Get it? There's five of them, five songs. 5 by 5 was the EP of this, and all those songs are on here along with many others. This is another great album. The sound quality takes a big leap here because they started recording at other studios. A lot of this was recorded at Chess Studios with Ron Mallow as the engineer, and it sounds a lot better than the early Chess stuff. Uh, some of this was also recorded with Dave Hassinger at RCA Studios in Hollywood. And that's one thing about the Stones that made this set a little different. These albums were all cut from digital tapes as opposed to analog. The reason they were cut from digital copies is the analog tapes were spread all over the place because they were recorded at all these different studios with a lot of different engineers. So in the early 2000s, ABCO, the Beatles, or the Stones' original management company, went back, found all those tapes, and tried to put everything together and get the correct versions of everything out there. Because for many years, the CDs, the first batch of CDs of these, sounded atrocious. There was fake stereo, which is where they slash the highs from one channel and the lows from the other, but it's not really stereo. Uh, badly reverb things, hissy dubs of things. They didn't know which tape was which, so they went through, ABCO did, tracked them all down, put out everything on nice SACDs with the correct tracks and uh, put things in stereo where, where they could. And it was a great uh, undertaking for them. And it's a great thing that they did. These new in mono versions is the same team as behind those. They had put the same level of care into them. But assembling a tape to cut vinyl from, they had to make digital copies because the analog tape reels were just all over the place. So this was their second album. In America, in England, their second LP was called Rolling Stones Number no. 2. And as you'll notice, it's got the same cover photo. And in both cases, you'll notice the skin tone is off a little from this first album. And all of them are pretty grainy, which is unfortunate. But I'm sure they didn't have access to the original artwork anymore. Uh, these both have a different skin tone compared to something you'll see in a second. Um, and they're less grainy, so they might have had maybe a better generation thing to work with. 
but it's the same photo on two completely different albums. If you'll also notice in the top corner here, it says mono. That's reminiscent of the German Teldec label, how they repackaged these albums in the 1980s. And they did a pretty decent job, uh, but that's reminiscent of that. That is not what you would have seen on an original British mono pressing, which is what this is supposed to represent. Uh, you also, the label would have been like this, but not quite this. This is about what a Deca label would have looked like back then. Red was for mono, blue was for stereo, and the font would have been different, the design a little bit different, maybe the logo slightly different, but this is a good representation. It does not say FFRR, as you may notice. That was Deca's full frequency range recording, um, trademarked name for it. We had Living Stereo here in the U.S. with RCA, and it was a whole raft of improvements they made to the recording process to tell people this is a hi-fi record. Well, that's a copyrighted thing, and Decca wasn't about to allow that on these new Stones reissues, even though original copies probably would have had that on there. So that's another difference. And another big difference, this is nice, heavy stock paper, uh, glossy jackets, but cardboard, really, not paper. But it's not tip-on, which back then, you on a British disc, you would have seen uh, a flap here that was glued and glued here. Uh, they didn't reproduce that as they did with the Beatles set. They just probably, for cost reasons and time consuming, they didn't do that. American albums usually had a slick, a piece of paper pasted over, um, you'd see the little seams of the cardboard underneath that. They didn't do that here either. So be that as it may, um, the jackets are still a pretty well done affair, even if they're not identical nearly to the originals, the way the Beatles discs are. So this is Rolling Stones number two on the right, the British album. It's American near equivalent is Rolling Stones now. Very similar track listing, obviously different artwork. And one thing on the back that's interesting, they pretty much use the same liner notes, but since it's a different track listing, they reference here a few songs that, you know, such and such played piano on this. They reference some songs that aren't actually on the American version because they just lifted the British notes wholesale without paying attention to when they changed the tracks the fact that they were referring to things that didn't exist so that's a little interesting going backwards for one second on 12 by 5 original copies right in here mention something about if you want to get this album push over a blind man and rob him to get the money well somebody didn't like that so that came off after the first few issues of this and it's still gone as you can see there's an odd gap here uh, so if you ever see a copy of 12 by 5 that's got that text, it'll be worth a few bucks. But here, they weren't able to restore it. So, moving along, the Stones' next album in the U.S., Out of Our Heads. That's the U.S. version. This is the U.K. I really like the U.K. cover, and I really like the U.K. album. It was their first sort of statement that was somewhat cohesive, whereas the American version was just cobbled together by the... American Record Company. That was their first number one album in America, though, and it would be their last one until Sticky Fingers, and this, like I said, includes Satisfaction. Uh, both great albums, but one thing that bothers me, the British Out of Our Heads contain songs that are available throughout the rest of the set, and so that makes it completely superfluous. All they really needed to do was include the American version, and the cover photo for the American version is also not represented in the rest of the set. The British cover is, as you'll see. One thing about the cover photo, this is what I was just saying, it's from the same session that produced this cover photo. But you'll notice the skin tone on this is a lot closer to an original pressing and a lot more natural than this, which tells me that this, especially here, this gives it away, is quite a bit more tinted, the uh, artwork they used here, than here. An original would not have looked like this. An original 12 by 5 would have looked more natural like the photo from out of our head. So, Here's December's Children. This was another American compilation that had some great stuff on it that was not available anywhere else. And it uses the same photo as the British Out of Our Heads, as you can see. And that's also included in the set. And here's their next album, Aftermath, and the British version. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting ahead of myself. There's the British version of Aftermath. This is also a great album. Uh, this uh, American version, again, was completely superfluous. There's one song on here, on the American, that's, on a, that's not on the rest of the set, Paint It Black. They could have just appended that to the compilation, I think, and saved us all some time. 
the compilation that comes uh, along with the set. So we'll get to that. But the British version, this was their first album, and had all Jagger Richards originals. This is really an artistic statement, a big leap forward from out of our heads. And in this box set, this sounds phenomenal, the British version. The American, the same cuts in the American version sound fine too, but this as a whole just sounds incredible. I was blown away. It sounds even better than the 2002 SACD. And there's even some songs on here, uh, such as Flight 505, uh, which the vocal has a completely different feel because they cleaned it up so much and it was mixed in mono differently and has um, less reverb. So this I highly recommend. If for some reason they ever release these by themselves, standalone, this is one of the two must-haves out of this box set. The rest of the discs in this set sound at least as good as the 2002 SACD, so they're still, still highly recommended. The next Stones album, Between the Buttons, this is the British version in that it's the British uh, song lineup. Uh, the American one is slightly different, but the cover is the same, and they only included the British here. I'm glad they did that. Uh, again, it would have been a case of an album that's completely superfluous if they added the American track listing, because all those songs are available elsewhere in this box set. So only the British here, and that's a good thing. A lot of the cuts that would have been on that American Between the Buttons are on this. This is a compilation that came out in America in 1967 called Flowers. You'll notice that Mick and Keith apparently arranged not to have any flowers on Brian's stem as a little in-joke, which is strange. Uh, but this is a compilation. It's got some good stuff on it. The first side alone is Hit Packed and has your Ruby Tuesday, Have You Seen Your Mother Baby Standing in the Shadow, Let's Spend the Night Together, Lady Jane, Out of Time. All great, great tunes. And Have You Seen Your Mother Baby Standing in the Shadow and Out of Time sound really good here. They did a great job cleaning those up. The rest of the album sounds pretty good. And this is another case of something that, uh, this was a thrown together American compilation, but here it was really needed because it has a lot of tunes unavailable anywhere else. The next Stones album that came out was the very misunderstood Satanic Majesties. This mono version, uh, I'd been told over the years, had phenomenal bass. I have an American mono version, which sounds okay. The American copies were never pressed as well. The tapes were copies of copies of copies, or God knows what. They might add some reverb when they got here, so they never sounded as good American copies. And I finally got my hands on a British one. I was really looking forward to hearing the phenomenal bass. And the bass is good. But it didn't blow me away jukebox bass the way, say, that the sound quality of Aftermath blew me away. But it still sounds excellent. Uh, my only sort of confusion with this is that's an original, uh, this is the reissued British cover. This is an American original cover. This is an original American, this is a reissue. Now you'll notice, first of all, this does not have the 3D photo, nor did I expect it to. The parts to make this 3D uh, jacket were, were destroyed long ago, so they've never been able to recreate that after the late 60s. That's not what confuses me, though, because every other issue did have this photo. What confuses me is how much bigger the photo is here versus here. If you have noticed, look how much bigger the border is here versus here. It's also a lot more washed out here than here. I'm not sure what the reasoning for that is. Um, about 10 years ago, Abco put out a stereo version of this, the photo was not enlarged, but the border was silverish. So I'm not sure what's going on with this album's artwork, why they keep trying to alter it. But just like on the front, the back also has a great deal of uh, uh, increase in size. Look how much bigger this is than this. And it wasn't just a case of them scaling up the center part. The whole thing is bigger. You'll notice this green flower here. It ends at the bottom of the jacket. Here it stops there. So they just cropped this about three quarters of an inch in to make this. I'm not sure why. See this green flowery border? That's, what, a half an inch from the top? Here it's almost a full inch from the top. So, very strange. Another thing I noticed was there's song titles, or song timings here, but not here. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. Maybe original British copies didn't have that. I'm not sure. But the original American copies sure did. And for some reason they didn't carry that over. To, uh, to this version, so, to 1968, Beggar's Banquet, released in December of 68. The odd thing about this is, this was the original cover they wanted when they were finished with the album in June or July, and the record company said absolutely not. 
They fought them and fought them and fought them. Finally, in December, they agreed, okay, we've got to get this album out. We'll put it out in this very tasteful jacket, dripping with sarcasm. So this was what buyers saw in the late 60s. This is what the Stones wanted, and eventually when the CD came out in the mid-80s, they restored this, and they've used it ever since. Uh, so this is no longer a thing, at least for Beggar's Banquet. You'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. But for original, for the reissued copies of Beggar's Banquet, this is the jacket. Looks good. Uh, but this album was never mixed for mono specifically. This is one of those fold downs I, I was mentioning earlier, where two stereo uh, channels go into one and become a fold down. So this is not a distinct stereo mix or distinct mono mix. It's the stereo folded down, but it still sounds phenomenal. This and Aftermath sound incredible compared to any other version I've ever heard. One thing the reissue corrects is that back in 68, the master recorder was running a bit off speed. So while the songs sounded slightly slow on original issues, uh, they discovered that in 2002, and all the reissues since then have fixed that. Uh, so the character isn't really altered that much, but it does sound a little different. This album also does include one dedicated mono mix that's different from the stereo. It's not a fold down, and that's the first cut, Sympathy for the Devil, which definitely does have a different feel to it. So I applaud them for tracking that down and including it. One last thing about this specific reissue I'll say is that Salt of the Earth, the very last song, has a lot of dropouts. Dropouts are when a tape gets damaged, and so the head can't make full contact or get uh, all the information off the tape because some of the oxide may have chipped off, that sort of thing. There's many different reasons for dropouts. But Salt of the Earth has a bunch of dropouts. I was really shocked. Uh, and you would think being a fold-down, they could have just gone back to the stereo version and folded it down again, but they didn't. So a little unfortunate, especially because this is one of my favorite albums, and the sound quality is so amazing. But uh, overall... It's a great piece, and it's a great thing to have, and I'm glad they included this, because in the Beatles box set, for example, the albums that were released as fold-downs uh, that were never had a real mono mix, which would be Abbey Road and Let It Be, they, didn't ju they just didn't include them. They said, forget it. Those were never officially released in America or England in mono. We're not going to include them. The fold-downs came out in third-world countries or like Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, so they didn't bother including those fold-downs. Here, they went ahead and did it so they could be complete. And I like that. The next Stones album, and the last one of the 60s, Let It Bleed. One of my favorites. This is also a fold down. The whole thing is. There's not a single track, the way there is on Beggar's Banquet, that's a fold down. But one thing here that they retained was this up here. If you can see that in the top right corner, there's a little hole that says red mono blue stereo. What that would be, you'd put the inner sleeve in. This was a common thing with Decca Records. You'd put the inner sleeve in, and then they would have a red or blue border on the inner sleeve, and that would show through here, and then you'd know what you were buying. Then they didn't have to print two sets of jackets that said mono and stereo or something like that. Uh, so that was very clever. I'm glad that they retained that little touch, and they retained it on the inner sleeve as well. See that? Red mono border, and, and when you slip it in, the red peeks out, and boom. And, of course, in Britain, a blue uh, text with blue border saying stereo inner sleeve was what was used for the stereo. So I'm glad they retained that touch for this reissue. One thing they did not, two things they did not retain. Number one, original copies of Let It Bleed came with this photo. And it had a come on for the fan club. Uh, it's too bad because it's a great photo. And they could have re-released it, maybe just cropped it. I don't know because the fan club, I'm sure, is, information is different. But for whatever reason, they didn't include that. So this photo and the one from their very first album are not included, nor did they include in this reissue the poster. Original copies of Let It Bleed came with this poster. There's that. It says the Rolling Stones. So it's too bad. It would have been nice, since there was so little to, in, to reissue, as far as bits and pieces, it would have been nice. The Beatles box set, you know, they included the poster from the White Album and the photographs. They included the cutouts from Sgt. Pepper. They included the uh, booklet from Magical Mystery Tour um, and everything. So for this, it's too bad that they couldn't include the two, three little things that, that otherwise would have, uh, would have been included. Since the Stones rarely did that sort of thing. And just to show you... In America, that album was never released in mono, even as a fold-down. So they didn't need to do the red and blue trick with the inner sleeve. 
So this is what the inner sleeve looked like in America, pink with black print. So that's just a bit of information for you. The last disc in this set is Stray Cats. And as you'll notice, it takes up the motif of the Beggar's Banquet original cover, which was a great callback that I'm glad they did. This includes a lot of Stray Cuts, that's where they get the title, uh, that are not on the album. Singles, songs that were on EPs, that sort of thing. And this is quite well done. It's two discs. It's a lot like the Beatles' past masters, and it helps sum up the entire Stone story of the 1960s, and I'm grateful that they did that. Uh, that was one of the main reasons I bought this set, because to find all these cuts otherwise, you'd have to track down a few Greatest Hits compilations, you'd have to track down Hot Rocks Volume 2 from 1972, which had one side of these rarities from EPs and whatnot, and so to gather it all here was a really good idea. I'm glad they did that. But they didn't include everything. And so I will now go into the things from this box set that are not included. The last Stones album on Decca in London was this great live album, Get Your Yaya's Out, from 1970. This was never released in mono anywhere, even in a fold-down. So finding stereo copies or finding copies in general is pretty easy. This was the subject of its own box set in 2009, and I'm sure that's the reason that they didn't include it in here, aside from the fact that it was never released in mono. So that's not included. Also not included is this. Got live if you want it. This is an EP, came out in 1965. This, uh, what I'm showing you here is a Japanese reissue on 12-inch vinyl from 1983 or so. But the original was a 7-inch mono EP in England only. And most of these cuts they took in America and they put it on Out of Our Heads or December's Children. So it doesn't really matter that they decided to uh, uh, not include those. But there are a few cuts that were not included anywhere. And I'm going to show you those now. On side one, We Want the Stones is people chanting We Want the Stones. Then they came out and launched into Everybody Needs Somebody to Love for about 40 seconds and then right into Pain in My Heart. They did the whole song of Pain in My Heart. So that's, what, one and three quarters songs, one and a half songs on this album that are on this EP that are available nowhere else. Uh, the rest of this EP, Route 66, I'm Moving On, I'm All Right, that's all available elsewhere. But those first one and a half songs are not, and it's unfortunate. The only place to get them is either on this EP or on the CD box set of singles, 1965 to 1967, that came out about 10 years ago, which is quite expensive for just one and a half songs. Uh, so it would have been great if they could have included that on Stray Cats. Would have uh, saved everyone a lot of aggravation. There's also an LP, a whole album called Got Live If You Want It, with slightly different, well, with quite different artwork, that has completely different contents than this EP. It's not a very good album. It's a live album. It's got uh, basically studio outtakes with screaming overdubbed and that sort of thing. The sound quality is muddy and terrible. And uh, a few of those cuts did show up without the screaming on Stray Cats. But for the most part, that 1966 album is not the one to get. This EP, though, is pretty excellent. And the other thing not included on the Stones' very first album, The Rolling Stones, there's a song, Tell Me, and first pressings of this album had a completely different recording of Tell Me supposedly by accident. They quickly reissued the album with a different version. So it would have been nice if they would have included that original uh, recording of Tell Me, just so we would have it. And then at the end of the Stones' career, they were told they owed one more single to the record company. So they quickly came up with this song, Brown Sugar, a version with Eric Clapton. That might have been the B-side or the A-side, I don't know. And then for the A-side, they came up with this naughty tune. That's right. They knew Decca would never release it, and they didn't, and then a deal was struck with some business uh, dealings for a part of the rights to Brown Sugar. And you can read all about that at Traffic Blossom, the blog, which there's a link below to that. Uh, but this song has had an official release. There was a Japanese box set that came out in the early 80s, and it was included on that as a bonus. It was quickly withdrawn, but still, it was on there. There was also a German box set that included the song. And that German box set was called The Rest of the Best, and it tried to do what Stray Cats does. It also included uh, Schoolboy Blues, which, you know, the other title for that, and Memphis, Tennessee, and To Do Run Run, the old Phil Spector tune. Those aren't officially available anywhere else. 
It also had mixed solo version of Memo from Turner, which was never released in mono. So that's four songs right there on the rest of the best, on original pressings, that could have been included here. So those are some of the things that are not included on here. There's also, and again, this is detailed on the blog, uh, about eight or nine cuts, early demos, BBC cuts, that were included as bonuses with the 2012 box set Gur, which was a hits box set. And those songs are, were either digital downloads or they were on a 7-inch vinyl EP included in there. But that still technically constitutes an official release, so it would have been great if those had been included in here somehow. They could have added an extra disc instead of those two LPs I mentioned that were completely unnecessary. By the way, here's the book that comes with this. Not as comprehensive as the one with the Beatles set, but still a lot of great information. So to sum up, this is probably the best way you're ever going to get all of the Stones albums and songs from the 60s in one place in excellent quality. Sure, as I mentioned, there's about 15 songs that are missing. Would have been nice if they had included them in here. But you can find those from other sources. They're, you're not going to lose any sleep not having them. Uh, and all the great material that is in here more than makes up for it. This, I would give this a strong A-. minus For little things like the grainy photos or for a couple missing songs. Uh, I'm not in love with the idea of two whole LPs that are pretty much superfluous. But overall, this is the best way to get all the Stones music in one place the way that they intended for it to be heard.